What's going on, y'all? Mr. Actagano here, and we are back with episode 5, season 2 of the 3 Minutes on the Clock podcast. Today, we have my fourth NFL mock draft of this season. Uh, Today's mock is going to be three rounds, no trades. I do plan on incorporating trades from here on out, but not today. This is what I think will happen, not what I think should happen. I don't agree with all these picks. I wouldn't make all these picks if I was to the GM. I'm trying to predict what's going to happen in April. I think down the line, I probably will have mocks of what I would do if I was the GM, but we'll save that for a later day. And we got a lot of exciting stuff coming up within this series these next couple of weeks. Of course, the Combine is coming up, I think, in two weeks. So probably next weekend, I'll have like a Combine preview video, what to expect, who I think the stock is going to rise and who I think will sink. And then after the Combine, I will recap it and I will go through whose stock did end up rising and did go down. Also, I do want to incorporate some NBA mock drafts here and there. This series is not just about the NFL. Uh, I like to have a few NBA mocks before the NFL draft and then after the NFL draft. It's all NBA up until June, pretty much when uh, the the NBA draft is. And then after that, uh, the cycle of podcast episodes stops until January. So that's pretty much what to expect. I hope you guys are excited. And let's get on with today's mock. The first two picks are very obvious. They have not changed since my first mark back in January, and I do not expect them to change until the draft itself, as Joe Burrow goes number one to the Bengals, and then Chase Young goes number two to the Redskins. Looking at Burrow, I mean, the swagger and the intensity is definitely there, and he had a historic season this year at LSU, and I think the Bengals would be crazy not to take him here at number one, and I expect them to do so. Andy Dalton's reign as the franchise quarterback is pretty much done. Should have ended a few years back if they wanted to get out of mediocrity. But now that the Bengals have this opportunity on a golden platter to potentially draft a guy in Burrow, who I don't think will ever be a superstar, but I think he'll be a borderline top five quarterback in the NFL. So I I guess you could determine that as a a superstar in some eyes. I don't think he'll ever be the best, but I think he'll consistently be one of the best for a while. And maybe if the Bengals can build a good team around him, this squad's going to be good for a while. And then with the second pick, a generational talent, in my opinion, Chase Young to the Redskins. Some people are thinking, oh, they don't need edge. They don't need D-line. They have bigger needs. Why not get a guy like Jeff Okuda? They need cornerback way more. Well, that's because Chase Young and is a generational player, and while it is not hard to find good pass rushers, it's hard to find great ones. And Chase Young, in my opinion, has the ability to be great. Now, the Redskins have invested a ton of top picks into their uh, front seven, and to be more specific, their defensive line, getting guys like Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne, both of whom have developed really nicely. Matt Ioannidis was also a late-round gem they got. Montez Sweat last year on the edge. And then on the other side of him, Ryan Kerrigan. Those are three interior linemen in Allen, Payne, and Ioannidis. And then your two main pass rushers in Sweat and Kerrigan. So where is the need for Chase Young? Well, Chase Young is, one, the best player on the board by a mile. And then, two, Ryan Kerrigan's getting old anyway. And he was not the same Ryan Kerrigan from these past few seasons last year. So I think the Redskins would be absolutely high not to pick Chase Young unless they get an absurd trade offer that they can't pass up. With the third pick, the Lions, this is where the draft starts, in my opinion. This is where we could see a trade. This is where multiple players could go. Maybe Jeff Okuda, maybe Isaiah Simmons, maybe Derek Brown. Maybe the Lions surprises and pick a guy like Tua. Please don't do that, Lions. But for right now, I do think the pick will be Okuda. As a Lions fan, if I were to make the pick, other than a good trade offer, I would my prop my top target would probably be Isaiah Simmons. But Okuda would be my second option, and I'd be happy if we picked up Okuda at three. One of the best cornerback prospects to come out probably since Jalen Ramsey, which says a lot because there have been some great corners that have came out these past few years. Marshawn Lattimore was excellent early on, has kind of slowed down since. Denzel Ward in 2018, Gritty Williams last year. I know Gritty Williams was a mid-second round pick, but I graded him as a top 10 prospect. 
And I think Okuda is better than all three of those guys. And one of the best corners probably to come out in the past decade, I would put him right in that Jalen Ramsey tier of talent. And I think Okuda immediately will be a star for whoever picks him. Him and Darius Slay will be a really nice duo. I think the big question being, does Darius Slay stick around? There have been trade rumors with him. Uh, the Lions don't want to pay him an absurd contract, and rightfully so. If he's asking for four years north of 64 mil or something, I think the Lions should look to trade him. And I think, realistically, I think a second-round pick is fair value. I don't think the Lions are going to get a first for Slay as much as I'd love that. I think a mid-second from a, a team who is a few pieces away from maybe making a run in the playoffs, I think that makes sense for both sides. If Slay is locked up on a short contract or not a super pricey deal, I'd be happy because I love the guy. But I think the Lions uh, would be crazy not to look at trading Darius Slay. And whether they do or don't, I think Okuda still fits a need and still makes sense. Pick four, Isaiah Simmons, linebacker, Clemson to the Giants. Giants could look at offensive line. There are numerous tackles who could go here. I think they could look at... Any one of the big four being Jedrick Wills, Makai Becton, Tristan Wirfs, and Andrew Thomas. They could look at wide receiver, maybe a guy like C.D. Lamb or Jerry Judy. But I think they're going to go best available here and pick up Simmons, who can do so much for your defense. And the Giants have so many holes on that side of the ball. They have no good linebackers. They don't have very many good edge rushers. Their D-line is fine. And they have a few pieces in their secondary. Jabril Peppers is okay. There are a few developmental guys at corner, like DeAndre Baker, Julian Love, um, Grant Haley. None of those guys are any good, to be honest, but maybe one of them plays well next year and can pan out. So all around, the Giants need a guy who can really do a lot. And Peppers is a versatile machine, but he's not a star by any means. He's the star of their defense because they have like no one else. But Jabril Peppers, talent-wise, isn't that special. So you're getting a special talent on Isaiah Simmons who can do so much on a defense. You can put him at off-ball linebacker, slot corner. He'd be an awfully big slot corner. You can put him at safety. Heck, every once in a while, you could slide him at an edge, rushing the passer. What can't he do? Last week uh, in my big board video, my weakness for him is that he might be too versatile. Too versatile. Is that even a weakness? I don't know. But I think Isaiah Simmons is a freak, not to mention he is going to explode the combine He's going to put up historic numbers, and he is my second best player in this draft, and I think this will be a phenomenal selection for the Giants. Pick five, Tua Tungavailoa, quarterback Alabama to the Dolphins. I've had the same pick since my first mock. Tua at five to the Dolphins. It seems like he's their guy. Tua wants to play in Miami, and I think it makes sense for both sides. I think Tua has the highest upside out of any quarterback in this draft. But I am far from sold on Tua. He is my QB3. I have Justin Herbert and obviously Burrow ranked ahead of him. And I think a healthy Tua is not as good of a prospect as Joe Burrow. Some people may disagree with that. I think Tua has a higher ceiling, but I think he has a much lower floor. He, while Tua has all the intangibles that you need to become a superstar quarterback, I don't think he has the traits to really make him a dominant one. I don't think he has the strongest of arms. It's not a weak arm. But I wouldn't say he is a cannon, and at times, he may have gotten bailed out because he has a phenomenal receiving core. Jerry Judy and Henry Ruggs are first-round picks this year. Jalen Waddell is going to be a first-round pick next year, and then Devontae Smith is probably going to be a second-round pick next year. Not to mention, Alabama has three draftable running backs on their roster. Najee Harris uh, is their lead back. He's great. And then some other young guys like Brian Robinson. He's not bad either. And not to mention that offensive line, too. Jedrick Willis, first-round pick this year. Alex Leverwood, first-round pick next year. You get, you get the point of where I'm, I'm going with this. But uh, And obviously, the medical con concerns are also there of Tua. Uh, he suffered a major hip injury back in November. It seems like he's uh, progressing really well, and he'll probably participate at the Combine, which is great news. And I think the Dolphins may have to trade up to, him for, to get him. I hope they do so the Lions can get some extra assets. But nonetheless, I think this is a match made in heaven for both sides. I'm just not a huge fan of Tua as a prospect, and I'm far from sold on him. Pick six. Surprise pick here. Not Justin Herbert to the Chargers. I have him going Mekhi Becton. Offensive tackle out of Louisville. 
So no Herbert. This is because I think the Chargers are going to sign someone. I think they're going to sign either Teddy Bridgewater or Jameis Winston. And I don't think either of those guys want one-year contracts. I think the Chargers are going to sign them to three-plus years. I don't think they're going to get both of them, but I think they're going to get one of them. And I think the Chargers want to build around whoever they sign if they go that route, whether it's Bridgewater or Jameis or maybe they sign someone else. I don't think it'll be Brady. I don't think we're going to get Tannehill. I think those two are sticking around where they're currently at. But I don't see Bridgewater or Jameis re-signing with their current teams. Maybe Jameis does. I wouldn't be as surprised if he returned to the Bucks, but I think the Chargers could be looking at either one of those guys. Heck, maybe they even go for a guy like Cam Newton in a trade package. So I think they're going to sign someone they want to build around and not look at Herbert, rather protecting who their potential franchise quarterback will be. And I think Mekhi Becton is a great choice. Phenomenal season this year at Louisville. He moves freakishly for a guy his size, 6'7", 365, and he is mobile. He's going to have a phenomenal combine as well. I can't wait to see the numbers he puts up in two weeks. So all around, I think this is a phenomenal pick for them. And Becton is one of my personal favorite players in this class. Pick seven, Derek Brown, defensive tackle out of Auburn to the Carolina Panthers. As the Panthers need someone in the middle of their defense. They have some talented defensive linemen, Gerald McCoy, K1 Short, Don Terry Poe. That'd be an elite defensive line if this was 2015, but I hate to break it to you, Panthers. It's no longer 2015. I know they wish it still was. And Derek Brown has one of the highest floors in this draft. I don't want the Lions to pick him at three just because I think it's a little bit high for a run stuffer, but Derek Brown is a phenomenal talent. I think he needs to improve as a pass rusher. I think he can pass rush, but I don't think he's elite, which is why I think three is too high, but I don't think seven is too high. Getting, in most people's opinion, the best player on the board and a guy who can really dominate in the middle of your defense. And the Panthers need someone to dominate in their defense. They've had Luke Keekley for the past almost decade. He's gone. They need a new face of that defense. And I think it can be Derek Brown. And then pick eight, CeeDee Lamb, wide receiver, Oklahoma to the Cardinals. CeeDee Lamb is a dynamic playmaker, pairing him up with his former college quarterback, Kyler Murray. They would be a really, really good duo together, a really fun pairing. And I think the Cardinals should look at offensive line over receiver. I think Jedrick Willis, Andrew Thomas, Tristan Wirfs, and if he's available, Makai Becton all work. But I think uh, they really want to go with C.D. Lamb. They really want to get a dynamic playmaker for Kyler. Kyler did not have a dynamic playmaker on his offense last year. There's some talent. Larry Fitzgerald is still productive. Kenyon Drake was a good trade pickup. And there's some potential. I really like Akeem Butler. He did not play last year due to an injury, but I think he's going to be really good. But regardless, I think getting the guy who Larry Fitzgerald can mentor to become a better route runner and a better possession guy, which are some of the, the things that C.D. Land needs to work on, I think that makes sense for both sides. And I think this could be a really fun pick for Arizona, even though it's not the pick that I think they really should go. Now on to the ninth pick, I have the Jaguars getting Javon Kinlaw, defensive tackle, South Carolina. I think Kinlaw is a more refined pass rusher than Derek Brown. And to be honest, I think he has a higher ceiling than Brown. I think Brown is a better prospect, but not by much. And I think Javon Kinlaw is right up there with him. And I think Kinlaw is going to test extremely well at the combine. I wouldn't be surprised if he passes Derek Brown on some boards. Not saying Derek Brown is bad. I'm just saying Javon Kinlaw is, I think he's going to rise after this combine. And the Jaguars are a team that needs a guy up the middle who can really be dominant. They drafted a pass rusher last year in Josh Allen, who I think is phenomenal. I think he's a star. But I think they still need to work on their defense. Yannick Ngakwe is as good as gone. I don't see him resigning. Maybe he gets a franchise tag, but I don't think he wants to resign in Jacksonville unless they pay him an outrageous contract, which I don't expect. And then there's some talent on this defensive line. Taven Bryan, former first-round pick, he still needs to develop. Calais Campbell, he's still really good, but he's also, what, 35 years old by now? So I think the Jaguars need to continue to focus on uh, their front seven to be more specific, the defensive line. And I think this will be a really, really good pick for them. Pick 10, Tristan Wirfs, offensive tackle, Iowa to the Browns. I think he's going to test well with the combine. I think him and Becton are actually going to pass Jedrick Willis on most draft boards. 
within these next uh, the next month or so. And I think Wirfs will probably be the second tackle off the board. The Browns really, really need offensive line. And I think Tristan Wirfs can really be a star depending on the fit. And I think the Browns are a pretty nice fit for him. So I think this could be a really good pairing for both sides. And I'm not saying Tristan Wirfs is the next Joe Thomas, but... He can be their next Joe Thomas, but probably a little bit worse because Joe Thomas is one of the top offensive linemen to ever do it. Pick 11, Jerry Judy, wide receiver, Alabama to the Jets. This is the first mock I don't have for Las Vegas Raiders getting Judy at 12, and that's because he's not available. The Jets could look at Jedrick Wills or Andrew Thomas as their offensive line is an absolute dumpster fire. And sort of like the Cardinals, I think they should pick offensive line here. I think getting a franchise tackle is more important than grabbing a dynamic receiver. But Jerry Judy is also not a bad pick either. It's a sexy pick, but Jerry Judy is still a really good prospect. I think he has a super high floor. I don't think he has the ceiling that CeeDee Lamb does, but I think he has a better floor than CeeDee Lamb. And Judy is a phenomenal route runner. And while he does not have the dominant athletic traits that a guy like CeeDee Lamb does, I don't think Judy's going to put up insane numbers at the combine, but I think he's a well-refined receiver, and I think he'll be great off the jump. And Sam Darnold needs a dominant number one receiver who can be good right away, a guy Darnold can depend on, because Darnold does not have that one number one guy right now, and they need a guy for Darnold to have a go-to, and I think that can be Mr. Judy. Pick 12, Patrick Queen, linebacker, LSE to the Raiders. I fully expect Patrick Queen's stock to continue to rise, and if he's even available at 12, which I don't think is set in stone, watch out for Jacksonville at 9. They could use some linebackers. I think that's a fair I think that's fair value at 9 for Patrick Queen. I think he's that good. His stock has risen so much this past month. He was phenomenal in the playoffs. He flies over, he flies all around the field, and the only weakness with him is his size. He's not the biggest, he doesn't have the craziest wingspan, but I think he'll test pretty well at the combine, and I think he'll be a great, great player in this league. And the Raiders, they need an identity at linebacker. They've been weak there for years, and I think this can be their guy who they can really name the face of their defense and develop around. Pick 13, Justin Herbert's slide comes to an end. He's going to go to the Colts. I think this is an excellent pick for Indianapolis. Herbert is my QB too. He's not as dynamic as Joe Burrow. He's not a game changer. However, I think he'll be a really solid starting quarterback. I'm not comparing him talent-wise to Matthew Stafford, but I think he can be the Colts version of Matthew Stafford, a guy who doesn't get talked a lot about as an elite quarterback, but he'll put up some numbers and... He can lead a team to wins. I understand Stafford isn't a winner, but it's not his fault. He's just been with a joke of the team for the past decade. So I don't think Herbert Love would be a superstar. I don't even know if we'll really ever consider him a top seven or eight quarterback. But I think he'll be just enough. If the Colts can get some talent these next few years, I think he'll be just enough to lead them far for a while. Pick 14, the Jedrick Willis slide comes to an end. He goes to the Bucks, who need uh, some work on their offensive line to, to block whoever their franchise quarterback is. I wouldn't be surprised if they bring back Jameis, but if they don't, what are they going to do? They could look at the draft. Jordan Love makes sense here. They could look at a guy like Cam Newton. I don't know if the Panthers want to trade him in division, but maybe a guy like Cam Newton, maybe Teddy Bridgewater, as I mentioned. Heck, there have even been some Taysom Hill rumors, which I think is absolutely absurd. I don't think he's a franchise quarterback at all, but nonetheless, there are rumors. Willis has been phenomenal this year at Alabama. He's one of the biggest risers in this class. I just don't think he's going to put up the jaw-dropping numbers that a guy like Makai Becton will, which is why I think Becton will be the first tackle off the board. Willis is excellent pass protection, which is what the Bucks need. They need a guy like Jameis or whoever their quarterback is to have time and feel confident, confident in the pocket to make plays to those dynamic receivers and Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. So I think this is a very good pick for Tampa Bay. Pick 15, Henry Ruggs, wide receiver, uh, Alabama to the Broncos. Speed, speed, speed. He's going to run a sub 4-3 40-yard dash. Him and Cortland Sutton next to each other, that is terrifying. And then pick 16, A.J. Epinesa, edge rusher, Iowa to the Falcons. I considered him or Caleb on chase on here, but I'm going with Epinesa because the Falcons have not had a lot of luck drafting speed rushers these past couple of seasons. Back in 2015, Vic Beasley, he had one really good year, but 
he's good as gone. The Falcons literally said they're not bringing him back. And then in 2017, they picked up Tack McKinley, who I think is super talented, but just hasn't really developed in Atlanta. He's a good player, but the Falcons haven't turned, into, turned him into the star but I was expecting him to become. So that's why I think they're going to lean towards Epinesa, more of a power rusher rather than a pure speed rusher in Caleb on Chase on. Speaking of Caleb on Chase on, he does not have to wait too much longer to get drafted. He's going to go here at pick 17 to the Dallas Cowboys. They got to get someone on the other side of Demarcus Lawrence. Robert Quinn had a great season, but He's not the guy the Cowboys are going to develop. And I think Chase On's going to put up really, really good numbers at the Combine. He reminds me a ton of Brian Burns. Phenomenal athlete. Literally like 4-5 speed off the edge. Literally, I think Chase On's going to probably run a 4-5 flat or in that ballpark. But just not great at stopping the run. And I think if Kalemon Chase On has a season like Brian Burns did this past year, I think the Cowboys would be thrilled to pick Chase On here at 17. Brian Burns had a really underrated rookie season for Carolina. Phenomenal pass rusher. He has so much upside, and he showed so much promise this year. And I think this makes sense for the Cowboys to swoop uh, Chase on here. They could look at defensive back. Christian Fulton, Xavier McKinney, Grant Delpit, all options here. But I think they're going to go with Chase on, who's probably a little bit better than that group, and I think has more upside than any of those three defensive backs. Pick 18, an absolute steal. And Andrew Thomas, the offensive tackle from Georgia. Thomas has been super good for the Bulldogs. He's only going this low because it sounds like the media is overhyping his stock. But I don't think the media is overhyping his talent. I think he's a top 10 player in this draft class. So the Dolphins, they got to get offensive line. If they want to to stay healthy, they got to develop these young linemen. And their offensive line is a mess. Getting Thomas here, who's not only the best offensive lineman on the board, but probably the best player in general on the board at the moment, I think makes a ton of sense and is a really good opportunity to build up the foundation of that front and try to win in the trenches, regardless of who starts this year, whether it's Tua or Ryan Fitzpatrick, probably fits. The Dolphins have to start developing these young linemen, and they have to start getting them because they don't really have any young good linemen outside of Michael Deiter, probably, and he's more of a guard. So you got to get a franchise left tackle, and I think that can definitely be Andrew Thomas. Pick 19, a little bit of a surprise here. Jordan Love, quarterback, Utah State to the Raiders. I think Derek Carr is a very competent starter. I think he's underrated. I think he doesn't get enough respect. I think he's easily a top 20 quarterback in the league, but I think the Raiders want to go into Vegas with a sexy new face at quarterback because the fans there are not going to be attracted to seeing Derek Carr eight times a year. They want to see a young, new, hot shot rookie in Jordan Love. I could see a team like Tampa Bay really in that market for a guy like Derek Carr. Probably not the Chargers since they're in division, but maybe Tampa Bay, maybe Carolina. I think you could look at them as a team that could want a guy like Derek Carr or maybe someone like New, New England or New Orleans who has an older quarterback and wants to get a guy that they can groom under Brady and Breeze respectively. So I expect uh, the Raiders to want to go into Vegas with a new young quarterback who has upside and Jordan Love has it. He has arguably the highest ceiling of a quarterback in this draft. I'd probably give it to Tua, and maybe Burrow even has a higher ceiling than Love as well. But Jordan Love has the upside. He has the physical tools. Basically a little bit worse of a Josh Allen. Not super accurate. Played in the Mountain West, so not a ton of competition. Strong arm. Love does not have the cannon that Josh Allen has, but you get the point. And then they're both pretty mobile. So I see Josh Allen, but a tiny bit worse in everything. Pick 20, Christian Fulton, cornerback, LSU to the Jaguars. They need corner. They traded Jalen Ramsey. It sounds like they're going to cut A.J. Boye. So they got to get a number one corner, and Christian Fulton could be their guy. And I wouldn't be surprised if they get another corner in the second or third round because they need one. Pick 21, LaVisca Chenault, wide receiver, Colorado to the Eagles. Chenault is a dynamic playmaker and has been really good these past couple of years for Colorado. My only concern is the health, and it's not that he's – a medical red flag per se, but it seems like the Eagles wide receivers just could not stay healthy last year. They had practice squad guys as their starters in the postseason, and to be fair, some of those guys like Greg Ward really stepped up. Greg Ward was excellent for the Eagles last year, 
considering the circumstances. But as long as Chenault can stay healthy, which once again, considering the recent track record and Philly for wide receivers is no guarantee, I think Chenault can be a phenomenal playmaker for Carson Wentz and company. Pick 22, T. Higgins, wide receiver, Clemson to the Bills. I love this fit. I love it a lot. I w- I'm going to compare them to the Lions real quick because you got your strong arm quarterback in Matthew Stafford and Josh Allen. And then you got that big bodied receiver for the Lions. It's Kenny Galladay. And for the Bills, I think it can be T. Higgins. I think Higgins compares a very similarly to Galladay. I think he's a little bit faster than Kenny. But outside of that, they have a lot of similarities. I, and obviously, a young Stafford did not have Galladay. That's because he had Calvin. Calvin's better than Galladay. But if you can give Josh Allen a number one dependable target, I think that'd be great for them. Yeah, they had some guys like John Brown and Cole Beasley step up last year, but they don't have a true number one receiver. And I think that can be Higgins. Pick 23, Xavier McKinney. Safety, Alabama to the Patriots. This safety class reminds me a lot of the 2018 one at the top with Derwin James and Minka Fitzpatrick. McKinney is your Minka Fitzpatrick, and Grant Delpit is your Derwin James. Depends on what the Patriots would rather, and I think they'd rather a versatile playmaker in McKinney rather than more of a, uh, I would say, well-rounded guy in Grant Delpit who can who's great against the run and the pass. More so McKinney, who's more who's better against the pass but not as good against the run, but can also play in the slot. You can put him out deep. You can have him covering uh, slot receivers, maybe even tight ends occasionally. So I think the Patriots are going to go for more of that versatile playmaker rather than the the traditional guy. And then pick 24, Jeff Gladney, cornerback TCU to the Saints. He's going to have monsters combine and really put him as a first rounder. And even though he's not being talked about as a first rounder, I've had him going in the first round in all four mocks because I love Jeff Gladney and I think he will slide as the third cornerback off the board. The Saints need another one. Eli Apple ain't it, Chief. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson is more of an inside corner. And then they're probably going to have to pay Marshawn Lattimore, which I don't even know if that's the best of ideas. So while the Saints could look at quarterback, they could look at receiver, I think they're going to go with Gladney here. And I think this will be a nice pick for New Orleans. Rounding out the first round, starting with the Vikings, they're going to go with defensive tackle Ross Blacklock out of TCU. I think his stock is going to increase as well. Super productive when on the field. He's had his fair share of injuries, missed most of 2018, but when he's on the field, he has been great for the Horn Frogs. The Vikings could look at O-line, they could look at corner, but I think they're going to go with Blacklock, whose stock I think will rise up and become a potential first rounder. Pick 26, Cesar Ruiz, interior offensive lineman out of Michigan to the Dolphins. He's my number one interior lineman. I think he's going to test well at the combine. He's young and he's raw, but he has upside to be a star in my opinion. This is the same pick I had in my last mock, Ruiz at 26 to the Dolphins. They could look at a guy like Lord Lloyd Cushenberry, who's more refined and probably a little bit better now, but I think Ruiz has easily the highest upside for any interior offensive lineman in this class and I think the Dolphins have potentially acquired two star linemen in Thomas and Ruiz. Pick 27, Yatur Gross Matos, edge rusher Penn State to Seattle. Regardless if Jadavian Clowney re-signs or not, Seattle needs another pass rusher next to him. Clowney did not put up high sack numbers because Seattle does not have a lot of talented guys going after the quarterback and especially if he leaves they're gonna have literally nobody. So I think they got to look at edge here. There are a few options they could go with, but I have them going with Gross Matos out of Penn State, probably the best edge rusher on the board. My highest graded edge rusher still available would be Julian Aquara, but Gross Matos here will not be a bad pick either. Pick 28, Kenneth Murray, linebacker Oklahoma to the Ravens. They need a CJ Mosley replacement pretty bad. They could look at edge. I don't think Matthew Judon will be back next year just based on the price tag he's going to ask for. So I think that instead, they could look at edge. Julian Aquara, Curtis Weaver, Terrell Lewis, Josh Uchi are all options. But I think they're going to go with Murray, who is higher graded than most of those guys as of right now. And I think this would be a pretty solid pick for the Ravens. Pick 29, Josh Uchi, edge rusher, Michigan to the Titans. A little bit of a surprise pick. Usually you see Weaver, Aquara, and Lewis all going before Uchi. But he had a really good senior bowl. He's going to play well in the combine. And him and Harold Landry next to each other, a pair of speed rushers, I think that would make their defense quite dangerous. At pick 30, I have the Packers going offensive tackle, Austin Jackson out of USC. 
They could look at a wide receiver to pair up with Devontae Adams, and that's definitely a need, but I do have them going with Jackson here. There are a few receivers they could look at. Justin Jefferson, Jalen Rager, probably at the top of that list. But I think they need to tackle equally as much. On the left side, they got David Bakhtiari. He's an all-pro. But on the right side, there's Brian Bulaga, who's a good player. However, he's had some injury issues these past couple years, and he's also not getting any younger. And the Packers are going to have to prepare for the future, and they got to keep that offensive line good. And the Packers have had a great offensive line for years. So I think continuing that trend, getting a guy like Jackson, who I think has a really high ceiling, I think he's going to put up good numbers at a combine, and I think he will definitely be a first-round pick. I think this would be a phenomenal selection for the Packers. As a Lions fan, I would not be happy if they did this because I'm quite high on Jackson. Pick 31, Grant Delpit, safety, LSU to the 49ers. Delpit was my number one player in the draft headed into the season. He sort of fell off a little bit, but I still think this is good value. He's great in run support, also pretty good in uh, coverage as well. It's just the tackling that he needs to work on. He's a really, really bad tackler at times, and he can get sloppy. But when he's on a roll, he's probably the best safety in college football. So I think there's a ton of upside here, but I don't think he is the floor that a guy like Xavier McKinney does. And then pick 32, DeAndre Swift, running back, Georgia to the Chiefs. Yeah, they don't need offensive playmakers, but it doesn't hurt to get another one, right? They've sort of had a hole at running back. Uh, Damien Williams is good, but I don't think he's great. And I think the Chiefs want to get a guy next to him, not to mention Williams isn't getting any younger. DeAndre Swift is super elusive, super slippery. Phenomenal moves. He has probably passed Jonathan Taylor for me for the best running back in the class. I think it's close. Last week, I had it as being Taylor, but now thinking about it, I'd probably give that honor to DeAndre Swift, but it's really a toss-up between those two and J.K. Dobbins, and at running back, the Chiefs could really go with any of those guys here, but I think Swift has the highest ceiling of the group, and I think that's why they're going to pull the trigger on him. Now, on to the second round, starting with the Bengals. They're going to go with Zach Bond, edge rusher from Wisconsin, and the great thing about Bond is you can put him at edge. You can also have him at off-ball linebacker. He's good enough in coverage to play off-ball, and the Bengals need both. So I think giving Bond a shot at both edge rusher and off-ball linebacker makes sense for them because they're holes at both spots. The Bengals have some talent at edge. Carl Lawson, Sam Hubbard, and aging Carlos Dunlap. None of those guys are bad, but I think the Bengals could use another pass rusher. And then they've been bad at linebacker for years. There is some potential with third-round pick Jermaine Pratt, who they used, who they acquired a season ago, but he wasn't a star or anything. And I think the Bengals could use either one of those spots, and Bond can do both. Pick 34, Justin Jefferson, wide receiver, LSU, to the Indianapolis Colts. Jefferson had a really good season this year at LSU. He put up numbers. And I don't think he's a dynamic or flashy playmaker, per se, which is why I have him slipping out of a first round. But I think the Colts could use a dependable uh, playmaker for their new quarterback in Justin Herbert. Their receiving core has potential. T.Y. Hilton is still good. He wasn't that good last year, and it showed on my fantasy team. Uh, Zach Paschal, he had a really underrated season last year. And then there's Paris Campbell, who didn't play a whole lot, but I think he has potential but none of those guys are necessarily short route runners. And I think developing Jefferson is more of a short route guy, along with his ability to stretch the field, I think makes a ton of sense for the Colts. And I think this would be a great pick for them. Pick 35, Lions get Jalen Rager, wide receiver TCU. Rager is one of my favorite players in this draft. So is there a little bit of bias here? Maybe. But the Lions do need another receiver. And this pick does make sense. So it's not totally biased. The Lions have a really good duo already in Kenny Galladay and Marvin Jones, but both of them are going to be free agents in 2021. Galladay is going to get paid big money. He's going to get paid at least $18 million a year. There's a chance he's the highest paid receiver in the league next year. I wouldn't be surprised about that at all, but I do expect the two sides to come to a contract agreement this offseason for a whole lot of money. However, on the other side, there's Marvin Jones. He's... On his second contract now, unlike Galladay, and do the Lions want to re-sign Jones at the end of next year? I love Marvin Jones. I think he's phenomenal, but I think there's a chance the Lions could look at trading him. Yeah, the rumors and all eyes have been on Darius Slay and Matthew Stafford, but I think 
Marvin Jones is more likely to get dealt than either one of those two. I think it does make sense, as I mentioned earlier, the idea of trading Slay and then trading Stafford, hell no. But I think it makes sense to look to move Marvin Jones. And he's a great, great player. He's been great for this team for a number of years, and I'd hope that we'd get something for him. Hopefully at least a third-round pick. I think that's a fair trade-off for a talented receiver who's only, who only has one year left on his contract and is nearing uh, 30. And how do you replace Marvin Jones regardless if you trade him or not? Get another guy who can stretch the field and Jalen Reger. He has some similarities to Marvin Jones. It's just that he's a little bit smaller and doesn't quite have uh, those jump ball abilities that a guy like Marvin Jones does have. But I think this offense can remain a deep passing offense with a guy in Stafford who has a strong arm and then guys who can stretch the field in Galladay and now Jalen Rager. So I really like the fit. And as a Lions fan, I would be ecstatic if we picked up Jalen Rager. I love him. I love Jalen Rager. Huge fan of his game. Pick 36, Lloyd Cushenberry, interior offensive lineman, LSE to the Giants. The Giants need some help on the line, and it's been well known for a while. They have some potential in the interior of their line, most notably Will Hernandez at guard. I think he's a very good player, but I think the Giants can use a few more pieces there. And Cushenberry, while he's a little bit raw, I think the upside is there, and this would be a good pick for them. Pick 37, Noah Igbenogany. That is how you say his name, by the way cornerback Auburn to the Chargers. He had a great senior bowl, and I have him as the fourth cornerback off the board. I think the fourth. There are a number of corners who could go in this range. I think Bryce Hall's going to get picked earlier than people think. C.J. Henderson, Trayvon Diggs, but I have it being with Ig Monogany. I think he'll put up good numbers of a combine, and I think there's a chance he could slide to first round consideration. Pick 38, Jake Fromm, quarterback, Georgia to the Panthers. Cam Newton's not the guy anymore, I don't think. And I think they got to look elsewhere. And I think Fromm has the upside to be really, really good. I just, uh, I'm not sold on him. And I don't think a lot of NFL teams are sold on him. But I wouldn't be surprised if he goes a lot earlier than people expect. Pick 39, Julian Aquara, edge rusher. Notre Dame to the Dolphins. The production has not been there with Aquara, but the potential is. There's a ton of upside with him, which is why I really like him. And I think this will be a good pick for the Dolphins. And then pick 40, Josh Jones, offensive tackle, Houston to the Cardinals. I think Josh Jones could go late top 10. I think he could go in the third round. Josh Jones' stock is really weird. He could, it, the combine is so important for him because I think his stock is so rangy right now. And I really don't know where he's going to end up. And I think the combine will be a big selling point on where he ends up. And for right now, I have him going in the early mid-second to the Cardinals, who need offensive line. They should have picked one in the first round, but Josh Jones here in the second round would not be a bad pick by any means. My first three mock drafts, I had the Browns getting safety Antoine Winfield Jr. here at 41, and that's not going to change. I had them getting Winfield again. I don't know if this is all a coincidence, but the Browns do need help at safety, and Winfield... Is the best one on the board. I don't see McKinney or Delpit falling here. I think a dark horse for this selection is Kyle Duggar from Lennar Ryan. I think he has a chance to rise up in that second round range with a good combine, and he'll put up numbers. But nonetheless, I do have it being Winfield, who is a very well-rounded player. Other than his speed, does not have the straight line speed, and he's not going to run a flashy time. But other than that, phenomenal season this year in Minnesota. And the Browns are getting someone who is super productive and has... Uh, the NFL running in his family. Of course, Antoine Winfield Sr., a longtime corner, most notably with the Minnesota Vikings. So I think having that experience from his dad could be really useful, and I think this would be a good pick for Cleveland. Pick 42, Malik Harrison, linebacker, Ohio State to the Jaguars. This is a lot earlier than most people have him mocked, but I think he could be that fourth off-ball linebacker take, and I think he'll test well in Indy at the Combine. And the Jaguars do need linebacking help. As I mentioned, I mentioned... A dark horse candidate at pick nine could be Patrick Queen. If they don't go with Queen at nine, if they don't go with Murray at 20, I think looking at uh, their second round pick using a linebacker here, it could make sense. And Malik Harrison would be a pretty nice selection. Pick 48, Cole Kmet. Tight end, Notre Dame to the Bears. He's not super flashy, but he does everything well. Not a phenomenal blocker, not a phenomenal receiver, but he's good with both. He's well-rounded. And I think Mitchell Trubisky needs a dependable target to go to. I think Allen Robinson's really good, but I think they could use another guy. And I think the Bears still believe in the potential of Trubisky. And to be fair, I think there's upside still there. And the Bears, 
I think they're going to try to focus on helping Trubisky rather than replacing him. Pick 44, Justin Matabuike, defensive tackle, Texas A&M to the Colts. Does not have the greatest motor, and he's taken some plays off sometimes, but when he's on, he's on. He's really good. And a lot of people may be surprised that I got guys like Ross Blacklock and Matabuike going over someone like Neville Gallimore. But I think Matabuike and Blacklock, especially Blacklock, are going to really have their stocks rise. And I think this will be a good pick for the Colts, who have invested some second-round picks in the interior of their defensive line recently, but not a lot of them have really worked out. Pick 45, Matt Hennessy, offensive lineman out of Temple to the Bucks. So the Buccaneers are doubling down on the offensive lineman, getting a tackle at 14, now focusing on the interior at 45, and that's not a bad idea at all. It's always good to develop the offensive line, and Hennessy has been super productive at Temple, and not to mention he's named after J.R. Smith's favorite drink, so he gets bonus points there. Pick 46, C.J. Henderson, cornerback, Florida to the Broncos. The C.J. Henderson slide is over. He is basically last year's Greedy Williams. Phenomenal in coverage, super talented, but just cannot tackle to save their lives. Takes some plays off. The effort isn't always there. That's why I don't think he will be a first-round pick, sort of like Greedy Williams was in last year. Pick 47, J.K. All Day. J.K. Dobbins, running back, Ohio State to the Falcons. I've had the Falcons going a running back for a while, and now that it is set in stone that they're moving on from Devontae Freeman, I think it's just more likely that they pick one. They could look at a guy like DeAndre Swift at 16, but if they don't, J.K. Dobbins makes a ton of sense here at 47. And then pick 48, Natane Muti, interior offensive lineman, Fresno State to the Jets. Muti is one of my favorite players in this draft class. I love him. I think he is absolutely worthy of a second-round selection at least I don't even think it's a reach to pick him in the late first round. I think he's one of the best interior linemen in this class, and I think the Jets are swooping a steal here in Muti, who's not being talked about as a guy who is going to be really good, but I think he's going to be really good. Pick 49, I got Bryson Hopkins, tight end Purdue to the Steelers. They have a few ways they could go here, but I think they could look at Hopkins Try to get a dependable target for whoever the franchise quarterback is, and I guess for the immediate future, probably Ben Roethlisberger next year. Hopkins is tight end one on most people's boards. For me, it's Komet, and I think Komet uh, will be the first one off the board, but I do think this is a pretty good pick for the Steelers. Pick 50, Sadiq Charles, offensive tackle, LSU to the Bears. I think they're going to focus on protecting Trubisky rather than replacing him. Same uh, message with the Komet pick earlier. Pick 51, a steal. Trayvon Diggs, cornerback, Alabama to the Cowboys. His stock has slipped a little bit the past couple months, but this is excellent, excellent value for Dallas. And they're going to capitalize on a guy who's falling for not crazy reasons. There's no real red flags with Diggs. And I think he is absolutely worthy of the late first, early second round selection. Super physical corner. He's been really good for a while with Alabama. And I think this is a great pick for Dallas. Pick 52, Terrell Lewis, edge rusher, Alabama, to the Rams. I think they could use a pass rusher. Dante Fowler, he might get paid big money. I don't know why I would not pay him big money at all. But regardless, I don't see him sticking around. And the Rams are going to lose a lot of pieces in their front seven outside of Aaron Donald. And Aaron Donald alone is better than half of the front sevens in the league. But you got to get some guys next to him. And I think Terrell Lewis can be really, really solid for this team. Pick 53, Bryce Hall, cornerback, Virginia, to the Eagles. I love Bryce Hall. He has been so good for the Cavaliers. Missed some time this year of an injury. I don't think it's a serious injury, and I don't think his stock should be slipping. I think he is worthy of a first-round selection, and this is even more of a steal than Trayvon Diggs. Pick 54, Curtis Weaver, edge rusher, Boise State to the Bills. Production, production. By the way, he was really productive in college. He has been so good for Boise State, and I think this is a phenomenal value pick for Buffalo here in the late second round, who is in need of another pass rusher. I think Curtis Weaver can really, really help out this D-line. Pick 55, another player I like a lot, Cameron Dantzler, cornerback, Mississippi State to the Falcons. They could use some extra corners. Desmond Trufant is really the only notable guy there, and he's not getting any younger, plus some injury issues in the past. So I think Cameron Dantzler makes a ton of sense, and it's pretty good value. And there are a lot of corners starting to go here. This is a very deep cornerback class, and teams now in the late second are starting to capitalize on value. Another team capitalizing on value is the Dolphins getting Damon Arnett, 
cornerback from Ohio State. He's been really good for a while with the Buckeyes. And I think this makes a ton of sense for the Dolphins. Great value, like all these other cornerbacks going off the board. And he can be their CB, I guess, too, behind Xavier Howard. And there are questions about Xavier Howard with this whole domestic uh, situation about uh, apparently a history, according to his girlfriend, fiance, wife. I don't have a relationship there. But he's been hitting this woman. It's, he, there was a report that came out a month ago about the first time he did it, and apparently there might be history with it. So Xavier Howard's Dolphins career could be in question, and regardless, they're going to need someone across from him or to replace him. Finishing up the second round, starting with the Houston Texans' first pick, they're going to go with Jonathan Taylor. Running back, Wisconsin. This is a phenomenal value pick, in my opinion. I really like Taylor. He's been so good for Wisconsin these past three years, and yes, he has been benefited from a, a run-heavy scheme. Running backs generally succeed here, and Wisconsin always has good offensive lines, but Jonathan Taylor is a phenomenal playmaker, and outside of the fumbling issue, I think he's a really, really good running back, and the Texans are getting a great, great player. Pick 58, Jalen Johnson, cornerback, Utah to the Vikings. Cornerback is probably their biggest need, and Mike Zimmer loves to draft cornerbacks. He did not in the first round, believe it or not, so he's going to have to here with Jalen Johnson, but I think it's really, really solid, and I think this is a pretty good value pick. Pick 59, KJ Hamler. How he is still on the board, I don't know. Wide receiver, Penn State to the Seahawks. KJ Hamler is a very, very good playmaker. You can use him in a number of different ways. You can have him on end arounds in the slot. Dynamic athlete. He's going to put up good numbers of a combine. He'll have a fast 40. And I think this can be a really, really good X Factor type player to the Seahawks offense. What I mean by X Factor is not how Madden defines X Factor. Those are the best players in football. But what I mean is sort of your guy who can do it all, sort of like a Taysom Hill. Now, obviously, K.J. Hamler is not Taysom Hill because K.J. is not a quarterback, but a guy who can do so many different things for an offense and really change the way teams game plan for you. Pick uh, 60, Donovan Peoples-Jones, wide receiver, Michigan to the Ravens. Peoples-Jones will have his stock increase with a good combine, and I think he will put up good numbers. And I think the Ravens need a guy across Marquise Brown, and Peoples-Jones has a ton of upside. I think he has a low floor, but a really, really high ceiling. Pick 61, Robert Hunt, interior offensive lineman, Louisiana to the Tennessee Titans. They could look at tackle here. I don't think they're going to re-sign Jack Conklin because they'll be focused on bringing back Derrick Henry and Ryan Tannehill. But for now, they're going to go interior line, which is a need as well. And there are a few good ones on the board, but they're going to go with the talented Hunt from Louisiana. Pick 62, Brandon Ayuk, wide receiver, Arizona State to the Packers. This is their guy alongside Devontae Adams. And Ayulik, you can put him in the slot. You can put him in the outside. I like his versatility. And I think he will create problems for defenses because Devontae Adams is not the only receiver who the focus is going to be put on. And having a guy like Ayulik next to Devontae Adams opens up so many new opportunities for their pass game. Pick 63, A.J. Terrell, cornerback Clemson to the Chiefs. Kendall Fuller is a free agent, and I don't think he's their top priority. And rightfully so, because Chris Jones needs to get paid. He is a beast. So, so good. But regardless if they bring back Fuller or not, I think the Chiefs could use an extra corner or two. And they've been sort of unlucky because they've had a bunch of good ones go within the last six or seven picks. But I don't think A.J. Terrell is a bad selection here by any means. And then pick 64, Lucas Nyang, offensive tackle, TCU to the Seahawks. Their offensive line has been bad for a while, and Russell Wilson is so good because he's been able to create plays despite the bad line, and now that he's getting older, he's going to start to lose some mobility, and he's going to depend more on having time in the pocket, and Seattle's going to have to have guys who can block for him, and Niang, he has the upside to be really good in this league. Now on to the third round, starting with the Bengals, they're going to go with Denzel Mims, wide receiver, Baylor. Mims was a guy who I really liked, and then he had a good senior bowl, and now everybody likes him. So he was going to be one of my guys, but now that everyone likes him, I, I, I'm not as much on the Denzel Mims hype train, but I still think he's really, really good, and the fact that I caught him first makes me feel good about myself. And I think this is a really, really good pick for the Bengals. Mims is going to put up good numbers in the combine, and I think uh, getting Joe Burrow another dynamic weapon could be really, really useful. Pick 66, Prince Tegawanahogo. 
Offensive lineman, Auburn, to the Redskins. You can put him at guard and tackle. I think he's pretty versatile. And the Redskins need both, so it makes sense. Pick 67, Neville Gallimore. In defensive tackle, Oklahoma to the Lions. I promise I'm not rigging this to give my Lions the best draft. But to be fair, Okuda, Rager, and Gallimore, that's nice. That's nice. Gallimore has been great with Oklahoma. And a lot of people have him ranked higher than guys like Ross Blacklock, Justin Matabuike. I think Gallimore is going to go a little bit later than them. I think Gallimore is going to put up good numbers at the Combine, but I think his age uh, mixed with the rising of Matabuike and Blacklock will really push him down to this third-round range. Pick 68, Jonathan Grenard, edge rusher, Florida, to the Jets. They need another pass rusher. They picked a Florida edge rusher in the early third-rounder last year in Ja'Kai Polite. He did not make it to week one of the regular season, so that pick didn't really work out. Then he got signed and cut by Seattle's practice squad, so he, he, that's a massive bust, even though it was the third round. And Grenard uh, has the potential to be better than Ja'Kai Polite. That doesn't say much. I think I would do better than Ja'Kai Polite. And the Jets need another dynamic pass rusher. They, they traded Leonard Williams, and they don't have a lot of talent on their defensive line. I mean, Quinton Williams is great, but outside of that, there's not a lot of talent there. And then they have some good inside linebackers in Mosley, Williamson, and Cashman, but they don't have great pass rushers, and I think getting a guy like Grenard here makes sense. Pick 69, nice. Darnay Holmes, cornerback, UCLA to the Panthers. I think they could use another corner to go next to Dante Jackson. James Bradbury's good, but his contract is up. I don't know if the Panthers want to re-sign him. Pick 70, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, running back, LSU to the Dolphins. Clyde had a great season this year at LSU. The Dolphins need a running back pretty bad. They also need a lot of other things pretty bad, which is why they've not picked a running back yet. And Clyde can be the main go-to back day one. That doesn't say a whole lot, though, because their running backs are terrible. Pick 71, Jacob Eason, quarterback Washington to the Chargers. Yes, I do think they're going to sign someone in free agency, but even if they do, it's good to have a backup option in case that doesn't work. And if the free agent signing does work, maybe Jacob Eason can fetch a, a decent trade. I don't, I'm not super high on Eason. I don't think he was all that good this year at Washington, but I think in the third round, it's worth it for a team like the Chargers to go after him. And then pick 72, Marlon Davidson, defensive lineman, Auburn to the Cardinals. He's versatile. He's more of an interior defensive lineman, but I think he can work in pretty much most schemes. And I think his versatility will really help him here at the next level. Pick 73, Courtney Davis, wide receiver, Texas A&M to the Jaguars. Outside of a few medical concerns, Davis has a ton of potential to be really, really good. And for a Jaguars team that needs another playmaker next to DJ Chark, I think this makes sense. Jacksonville is some talented receiver. Marquise Lee, D.D. Westbrook, Keelan Cole. I don't I don't think, I don't know if Keelan Cole's gonna be back next year, but the other two will. And Davis doesn't need to have a big role right away. But I think with D.D. Westbrook and Marquise Lee not having a ton of time left on their contract, it's good to have another guy behind them who can develop and eventually be the number two receiver alongside Chark. Pick 74, Jordan Brooks, linebacker, Texas Tech to the Browns. They're not gonna, I don't think they're going to re-sign Joe Scobert. I think they should re-sign Joe Scobert, but I don't think they will. And I think getting another off-the-ball linebacker does make sense. They drafted a couple last year in Sione Takitaki Taki, and Mac Wilson. Both of those guys showed flashes, especially Wilson, but I think they could use another one. And Brooks is a guy who's been really solid for Texas Tech. Pick 75, Bradley Ane, edge rusher, Utah to the Colts. Ana was really good at the Senior Bowl, and the Colts don't have a lot of great pass rushers. Justin Houston and Jabal Sheard are good, but they're not getting any younger. And then Darius Leonard's a nice pass rusher, but that's not his main strength. And Leonard, uh, he doesn't have one particular strength. He's just good at everything, and he's really, really good at everything. So, But he's not an edge rusher, per se. So that's why I do think they need to go with another pass rusher. And I think Ana is probably the best one on the board. Pick 76, Raekwon Davis, defensive tackle, Alabama, to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They've focused on the offensive line. Now let's focus on the defensive line. The Bucs got to get better in the trenches. They got Vita Vea in the first round a couple years ago at defensive tackle, who's been good. Not great, but he's been good. I think adding another interior guy in Raekwon Davis does make sense. Pick 77, Isaiah Wilson, offensive tackle, Georgia, to the Broncos. Garrett Bowles is a revolving door. 
And when he's not allowing sacks, he is causing holding penalties. So the Broncos need to go offensive tackle pretty early here, and I think Wilson's a pretty good option. If they don't go Wilson, they could look at a guy like Matthew Pert or Ben Barch, who are the next two selections to the Falcons and Jets, respectively. Two teams that could use some more offensive linemen. The Falcons did address it last year. They used two first-round picks on the line, but I think they could use another one, and they're going to go with Pert out of UConn. And then Ben Barch from St. John's to the Jets. They got an interior offensive lineman with their last pick in Natani Muti. Now it's time to focus on tackle, and the Jets aren't done. They're still going to have to focus on offensive linemen these coming off seasons, but adding Barch and Muti is certainly a good start. And then pick 80, K.J. Hill, wide receiver, Ohio State to the Raiders. Receiver is their biggest need. They did not get one in the first round, so now they're going to have to do so here. And K.J. Hill is a very high-floor guy who I think will make an immediate impact on day one. Pick 81, I got Troy Pride, cornerback, Notre Dame to the Raiders. Pride had a really, really good senior bowl. He impressed me a lot. And I think because it's a deep cornerback class, he's going to only go in the third round. But I think he's really underrated. And he he's one of my favorite prospects in this class. Pick 82, Kyle Duggar, never one of my favorite players in this class. Safety from Lennar Ryan. What are they, Division Three? I don't even think they're FCS, but Duggar has been really, really good for them for a while. He's going to put up very good numbers at the Combine, and I think this is the latest he goes. I wouldn't be surprised if he's a second-round pick. Pick 83, Troy Dye, linebacker, Oregon to the Broncos. Dye has been really good for the Ducks for a while. One of my favorite players on that Oregon team, and I think Dye is going to be really, really good at the next level, and I think the Broncos could use another uh, off-ball linebacker. Alexander Johnson came out of nowhere and was really good for them this year, but he's not getting any younger. And I think Dye can be their inside backer of the future. Pick 84, Ashton Davis. Safety, California to the Rams. I'm not super high on Davis. I think he's a little bit too old school. Not phenomenal in coverage, but he's good in run support. You're going to get 110% effort every play with him, and he does bring the intensity. So I do think there is a chance he could be good in this league. Pick 85, Akeem Davis Gaver, linebacker, Appalachian State to the Eagles. They could use some linebacking help, and I think Davis Gaver is really underrated. He's going to put up good numbers of a combine, and he's been really, really solid for App State. Pick 86, Rashard Lawrence, defensive tackle, LSU to the Bills. The Bills have a strength on defense, but it doesn't hurt to improve that side of the ball. Adding guys to their front seven and Curtis Weaver and Rashard Lawrence do make sense. I don't think they're going to bring back Jordan Phillips. I think he's going to ask for too much money. And then, obviously, with the Weaver pick, they do need some more pass rushers. And I think those two, along with Ed Oliver, can form a really nice group for that front seven. Pick 87, Adam Trotman, tight end, Dayton, to the Patriots. Trotman is one of the most underrated players in this draft class. He's been really good for Dayton for a while, and I think the Patriots are going to capitalize on getting a very well-rounded tight end who could be their guy for the future. And then pick 88, Nick Harris, interior offensive lineman, Washington, to the Saints. They drafted Eric McCoy in the second round last year. He was excellent, but I do think they need another one. And Nick Harris here at 88, this is a very nice value pick. Now it's time to finish up the mock. Vikings get Damian Harris, interior offensive lineman, LSU. The Vikings need help on the O-line. Pretty simple. It's been like that for a while. Pick 90, Solomon Kinley, interior offensive lineman, Georgia. Same thing for Cleveland. Their offensive line ain't much better. Adding Tristan Wirfs in the first round is great, but I still think they need more help. Pick 91, Jordan Elliott, defensive tackle, Missouri to the Raiders. I think they need a guy in the middle of their defense to really make plays. They drafted some edge rushers last year, and Max Crosby, who was great, and then Cleland Furl, who has potential, but I think they need to focus on the interior this year, and adding a guy like Elliott, who I think is quite underrated, is a good pick for them. Pick 92, Cam Akers, running back, Florida State to the Ravens. Akers is super talented. I'm not saying this is the next Kamara and Mark Ingram, but Akers and Ingram can form a really nice duo. Pick 93, Thaddeus Moss, tight end LSU. The son of a legendary Randy Moss goes to the Titans. I think him and Jonu Smith can be a nice pairing now that Delaney Walker's career is pretty much done. Pick 94, Hunter Bryant, tight end Washington to the Packers. Green Bay needs a tight end. He's basically Evan Angram, but a little bit worse. Pick 95, Alex Highsmith, edge rusher Charlotte to the Broncos. He's going to be slept on, and I think he's a really, really good prospect, and the Broncos could use another edge rusher along with Von Miller and Bradley Chubb. And the pick 96, Jonah Jackson, interior offensive lineman, Ohio State to the Chiefs. I think they could use some work inside. 
And I think this will be a pretty good pick for them. Jackson's stock has been rising these past couple of weeks. So that'll end the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoyed. Happy Saturday. And yeah, have a good day.